pigs in a bit. Let's see if I'm getting that audio on my side. Yep, definitely feels like it. Cool. Alrighty, in a handful of seconds. Saw dudes, welcome to the crib. Yo, dog. Today is the 15th of November 2021. My name is Bendo. You may remember me from this channel, and I greatly appreciate you for joining in for uh, maybe two hours of a game. Let's just jump right into it. Whoosh. Oh. There's the audio, and... And there's the game. Okay, cool. So, today I'm playing more Pokemon Gold. Uh, in the last stream, uh, I, stand it, I started the Kanto portion of the game. So, straight off the boat, uh, beginning the adventure all anew. Uh, you can see by the map, there is a whole new world. I started in that one town, about four sprite tiles south of where I am, and now I am here as well as also going over to the power plant. I got three badges, I'm gonna get more stuff. And that's okay, because that's pretty much, <laughs> that's pretty much how this post game goes. But, it's been good fun, I'm enjoying it. And to continue enjoying it, I'm going to continue playing it. So that's good. Uh, I hope you, the viewer, have been well, uh, and you, the audience, enjoy uh, watching this stream a lot. Uh, it's been definitely a uh, mildly tumultuous two weeks. Two weeks? One week. It's been seven days. Uh, but, I mean, you know, I always feel like, hey, there's always a place to bounce back. It, you can't go in the door. So, uh, I, I love this part of the first game, just to tension away from uh, mixed vibes of the past. Uh, I love, like, this part of um, the original Pokemon where it's got all of, like, all these towns so close to each other. So once you finally unlock Saffron City in the center, suddenly it's like, oh, it, it all makes sense. You don't have to go through all these like dinghy caves, all this stuff. It's weird going through it like the first time and like everything's all open because right now, yeah, I've barely fought that many trainers. I think that's probably what contributes to there being so much, you know, so little time spent between the, the routes. Once upon a time, I glanced through the text. He wanted to try the bicycle right away. He was having so much fun that he didn't notice the sun had set. While riding home in the pitch black night, the bike suddenly slowed. The pedals became heavy. When he stopped pedaling, the bike began slipping backwards. It was as if the bike were cursed and trying to drag him into oblivion. Shriek! The boy had been riding uphill on cycling road. But um, but um, for listening so patiently, you may take this TMO3. What TM is that? Uh, curse, I think. Yeah, it's curse. Okay. It's a terrifying move that slowly whittles down the victim's HP. Uh, again, there was a tiny little route on the way. I don't think there's anything too weird. Meowth, Raticate, uh, Persian. Meowth and Persian only on silver. Raditar, Spearow, Growlithe only on gold. Uh, Murkrow and Houndour at nighttime, which are two interesting choices. Uh... Did I say I wanted to start the stream getting the Lickitung? I think I might have, actually. And the boat is working, so I've actually got no excuse. So, okay, while I'm in this town, how about I'll catch the Lickitung. I've got the Oddish. Who is the other Pokemon I needed? I needed, like, three Pokemon. Uh... Growlithe. Okay, so, yeah. Alright. So, all I need is just to catch a Lickitung. Where do I get a Lickitung? I'm pretty sure it was, like, back in the, the Kanto part. So, how about, let's do some active catching. I don't know, someone's gonna yell at me on this one, but, uh, I gotta get this. So, let's get rid of Cut and Rock for the moment, because I don't need Cut and Rock. And instead, I'm gonna withdraw... Flashfly. Okay, so, this will be the first time that I've gotten back away from... Yeah, I was about to say, like, I could fly to, like, to the train station. I was like, no, because the train station is just here. Like, I, I don't have to go far. There it is. Train station. So, yeah, so after restoring the power plant, 
This is available all the time. I have one. All well, the people in Saffron ride the pass. <laughs> I did I handle this like completely out of sync? I think I did. Uh where do you get the pass? Oh. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not- I'm not too far off the money, but definitely, uh... So, back down. <laughs> oh my gosh, jeez. I can't believe I missed, like, this kind of route. So back down, uh... In this building. This is the... not that building. The next one. <laughs> it's got a sign, so I should have known. Uh, someone. I think it's this guy. Huh? All right, it's a Clefairy Pokey doll. Uh. Okay, wait. All right, I, I I've reminded myself of how you get this, but I'm curious where the trigger is. So, um, yeah. I know I can't go back just yet because, well, I can't go back to Johto just yet because I haven't done this. That's kind of weird that like you are like hard locked. My daughter likes to mimic people. She has been called Copycat. I swear I talked to like this. She recently lost the Poké doll a boy gave her three years ago. Ever since then, she's gotten even better at mimicry. That's what I feel like. Like I needed to know. I just needed to talk to her. I know, right? I don't know too many RPGs that do like the idea of um, uh, like talking to someone, gaining some info on on something. And then if I go back to this guy... No... Are you sure it's not that guy? I'm pretty sure... I felt like it was that guy. Because this person just talks about Bayleaf. Ah. Uh... Have I just completely blanked out on this? Seven minutes in, I've already... Already completely... Blanked out. Uh... Hold on, let me go back up. <laughs> Cause I, di I didn't talk to Copycat again? I don't know, like, is that... Is that the restriction? Who knows? Uh... But you know what I mean? I guess like a lot of RPGs now, uh... Have... Uh, over the top UI design, I feel. So they'll always inform you of something that triggers something else. That's okay. If I find it for you, it'll give me a rail pass. I'll go find it for you. You think you lost it when you went to Vermilion City? Pardon? I shouldn't decide what you should do, but I'm really worried. What if someone finds it? Okay. Right. Uh, now I've really got it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Alright. Uh. But yeah, I, I'm trying to think of, like, the last, like, big RPG I played. Probably Dragon Quest? Dragon Quest makes it incredibly clear, like, when something triggers something, though. Um, and surprisingly, I guess it's not through UI elements, really. It's just through really strong dialogue, so... Talk to the guy yet again. Oh, I see now. A girl lost his Poké Doll is sad. Could you take this back to that poor little girl? I'll befriend a real Clefairy, Clefairy on my own one day. No worries. Nurries! There you go, get the doll, key item. So, uh, yeah, I guess you have to do this after the power plant, but I don't know if the the mum mentions the lost doll until you've fixed it, so. I wouldn't imagine why they'd bury you on that, but sure, all right. Uh, so anyway, let's go back up to the top. Hello. Yay! That's Michael Fairy. That's the proof. Have a pass. There you go. There you go. You're happy now. You're happy. That's the pass for the magnet train. The railman company gave tore down our house. G Jeez. Jeez. No chill. No chill. Anyways, oops, oh, oh, I accidentally hit an emulator button, sorry. My bad. Oh, gosh. 
May I see your pass? Oh, okay. And then you go on the train. Whoosh! Like the one time you'll notice anything running at 60 FPS in this game. It's weird, like, the screen doesn't scroll quite like it should at 60. It's very odd. I don't know. I should do a bit of, like, frame analysis on this. It does feel like it doesn't move as smoothly as it could. So, anyways, now, yeah, you take the, the rail and you're back in Goldenrod, which is cool. Uh, so now I'm going to use fly, and I'm going to fly all the way to... I probably want to be on the, uh, this side, so, the mahogany. Uh, now I know, someone mentioned, uh, this person's always been here, right? There's a grandma shop, she sells stuff that nobody else has. Yeah, okay. Uh, how many balls do I have? Because that's, this is very, very vital knowledge. Uh, I think I've got a handful. Fifteen? Yeah, sure. Alright. So, the goal is to catch a Lickitung. That is the one Pokemon that I need in order to make this happen. Because I've already got an artist in there. And where's the grass? They did not put grass on that half of the, the route. Alright, so this is the only place to get Lickitung in the entire game. Uh, there's a 15... I think the grass is in the center. Is that's crazy that that is the only grass in the route as well. All right, well, time to catch a Lickitung. I guess that probably explains the rarity of Lickitung and maybe Tangler. I don't know if Tangler's only here and Weeping Bell. So uh, there's a 15% chance of me finding uh, Lickitung, and uh, we'll see what happens when he shows up. It's not going to be too too hard given I'm um, sailing back and forth right now, so I'll be all right. Uh, but yeah, no, I hope I hope you, the viewer, have had a great uh, week so far. Uh, except it's Monday, so I hope you had a great week. The last seven days leading up to today. Um, yeah, no, I've definitely I I felt like it's a bit of a weird one because uh, the game that I've been playing all week, starting from pretty much Tuesday morning, which would have been 158 hours ago is Forza Horizon 5. I might as well talk about this. This has been basically the only game I've been playing all week. And I'm at that point where I'm almost ticked off nearly everything in the game. There's uh, the main gist of the game for people who are not aware of uh, this game. This is not, uh, well, this is the Forza Horizon spin-off series. So I've been mentioning playing Forza Motorsport. Forza Horizon is a is an open world uh, car game where you basically just kind of tune in and do like odd events uh, in an open world setting. They kind of like pin checkpoints and point to point races, and uh, generally the cars are much more arcadey than they are in you know a more <laughs> more legit motorsport kind of franchise. But on the flip side, it's a fun, nice little arcadey kind of game. Uh, my general thoughts are the game is got a, a couple of like minor but definitely like please get it fixed because people are going to notice this and get very angry and I got kind of angry as well when some of those bugs came up. None of it is like too serious in the sense of like it doesn't like impede me from driving or really doing most of the game. But it's like some of like the weird endpoints of what I was like trying to do that get in the way so... Uh, let me explain a couple of the mechanics. So, there's your Lickitung. So let's have a go catching them as well. Um, I don't think the level really matters, but... Uh, oh, dude! Dude, I can become famous! Okay, there's two of them now. That's concerning. <laughs> Twitch tells me that they're first-time chatters. Well, thank you to first-time chatters, and to anyone, uh... <laughs> tuning in, I recommend that you totally cough, cough. <laughs> I don't, I, I love like, okay, uh, this my, you, you've derailed me on the, on the Forza thing, but I love the idea of like, you know, oh, you can't put the URL in the chat, so you got to put a space in there. I love that. But on top of that, I actually, I, I had a bit of a look at like some Discord scams that like some people were doing. Um, you know, like, cause, cause you're on a public Discord, you're going to have people just tune in and then drop the the casual ones but uh i find the the most like insidious ones 
are the ones that I think work off, like, trying to hit Discord's open web socket and, like, actually requesting certain information because Discord's API is so, like, kinda err. Uh. Um, like, you can do dis uh, api.discords.com slash at me and whatever login token that you've got on your client, it will give you its information. So people writing these APIs don't have to, like, you know, they just have to trick the client into trying to request towards this endpoint. And then, like, man in the middling. That's all they have to do, which is absolutely insane. And that's, like, there's a huge, like, security, you know, risk there. Um, the more classic ones that I've seen have been ones that just fake the, um, you know, like, the login page. Um, I hope people hate me just constantly chucking Pokeballs, by the way. That's how I play this game, man. That's how I play it. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, you can tell that they're absolutely fake. One, because, uh, fake URL. One of them, I did see, changes the address bar. So it doesn't actually, and I think they changed the history as well. Because you can do that. You can actually, like, trigger the browser to undo the last, like, entry in the history and then write in a new bit of history. It's intended for single page applications, but, like, legit, single page applications, like, have ruined a lot of the, the web landscape because, like, it's opened the floodgates for, like, two interactive stuff and, like, things that change for no reason. There's no reason why you need a single page application other than to minimize, I guess, loading, um, you know, loading some elements, uh, but yeah, I would, I would probably say, are there better ways that we can do this? Um, the traditional way I think in the past was inlining, like, uh, inlining an embedded page. So it's like, say for example, you're on, uh, Facebook for example, it's got a header on the page, like a navigation bar. That navigation bar, or rather the content under it, is part of a separate page. Uh, and then anytime you do a page load, it loads the like the inside page that was a classic way of doing like effectively single page applications uh obviously it wasn't and you know the browser didn't have to treat it like that in any way which i think is perfectly fine but yeah now we've got like programs that basically have to write like how they get written to the history it feels like such like manual work point is uh fake page pretends that it's uh discord or steam a lot of the time they go for steam um, I've never seen anyone try to try to hack my Uplay account. What is Lickitung's catch rate? Isn't it like 45? It is 45. What's he doing? Why is he taking so many balls? I don't know what's going on. Very odd. Uh. So yeah, so point is, don't fall for these scams. One, if you want to become famous, you are obviously not going to become famous if you buy followers. You can artificially bump up your Twitch number to a certain degree, but there's only so much that any of these fake sites will get you to. And legitimately, like, if you wanted to do it to become affiliate status so that you get ads, do know that, like, if you're not getting those viewers legitimately, then really there's no point. Uh, Two, uh, like, all of these, I mean, like, I, I don't know if you trust these sites in, like, giving any payment info. Something has gone wrong, because I swear this Lickit Tongue should have been caught, like, ten years ago. Someone's probably yelling at me, and I could probably get away with, like, another tackle. I don't know if I can. I have four balls that are not the master ball left as well, like... This is rather sad. There you go. Man, that, that took its time. Jeez. There. Nah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm calling him L. There you go. Uh, so now, let's flash fly back to Goldenrod, because that's where the rail is. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit of party tweaking first. I don't think I'm gonna encounter any grass on the way, so... 
Uh, so let's see, I've got Growlithe, I need Flashfly for the moment, and I'm gonna get rid of... Chicky and Fluffer. Just because I need... Wait. No, yeah, because I need I need L on my party, and I also need the Oddish. I, I guess I'm just getting the regular Oddish and not the one that's lower level. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, back to Forza. Uh, yeah, so, uh, the main... Wow! Wow, that was amazing. You, you got me between hitting select and, like, <laughs> doing anything. Alright. Uh, so the main, yeah, so the main gist of the game is that you've got a bunch of events, uh, some of the events are what they would call showcase events, they're just like scripted sequences, that is not the right place, my bad. I always get thrown off that the train station is like not at the end of the city, it's like here? <laughs> and like the train just yeets out across the road, like you think there's actually like a better place to position the station. Sure, okay. Uh... So, yeah, you got a bunch of events. Whole point is that, um, you're effectively doing these miniature achievements called accolades to gain accolade points. I think that's just what it's called. Uh, every so often in accolade points, you level up and you get to spend one, uh, kind of tick towards, uh, getting, um, I don't know, unlocking new things. Eventually, you, you've gotten enough accolade points and you've just unlocked every event. So the accolade points don't mean anything. But, ultimately, the accolade points are there to tick off, like, all the challenges. So it's like, oh, okay, well, you gotta compete in each of the things, win in each of the things, stunt jumps, make sure you've got, like, a three-star on all of them. Um, and then there's some challenges that are kind of particular, like, particularly with the, the stunts, it's like, oh, do, like, this stunt, and then this stunt, and then this stunt, get a three-star on all of them. And, uh... Do you have a Pokemon with a long tongue? Ah, uh, yes, it's, uh, Oddish. Huh? That's not the Pokemon I was talking about. So, yeah, you do all this stuff. Uh, one... A number of the accolades do not work. And that kind of did irk me a fair bit. Ah, so that is Lickitung. Isn't it cute? That's so kind of you. Thanks! This is a token of my appreciation. And this, this guy gives you the Everstone. Basically, if a Pokemon holds this, it will never, like, want to evolve. Can I visit me sometime? Please don't be between streams, because I can't afford to do this. Okay. <laughs> a green Pokemon has leaves growing on its head. Uh, this guy has, like, two more after this as well, but... <laughs> I only care about the... the Firestone. This is a token of my appreciation. So now he gives you the Leaf Stone. I... I think this is actually the only time you ever get a Leaf Stone. And this guy will... will do the same thing for... Uh... <laughs> a red sphere in its body? I wasn't prepped to get the star you right now. Ugh. <laughs> the worst part is that I don't know if I'm gonna need to get the other two as well. Ugh. Ugh. So where where do you get star you from? Uh everywhere. Including right here. Actually, yes, including right here. I might as well catch him here. But that does mean I need to buy some balls. So, back into the fray we go. Well, the balls have to be great. Uh, I'm going with 20. I mean, I don't really have a great use for money anymore in the game, so that's okay. Uh, but yeah, a number of the, the challenges don't unlock. Uh, like, particularly with the stunt ones, a number of them refer to, uh, getting a certain amount of, like, a distance in a certain car. But for some odd reason, the challenge in the menu will say 50 meters. The challenge in the, um, when you pin it to the screen will say 50 feet. And then it triggers, even after you get, like, 300, it's just like there's a random number somewhere under the hood that it's trying to detect, and I've got no idea what it is, and I don't really feel like trying it when I don't know what it is. I don't know, just doesn't feel, uh, engrossing to do it. Uh, this is probably the most awkward place to go for a Pokemon, but it's there if you use the Super Rod, I don't know, or the Good Rod. Or do, do the Good Rod. Alright, so yeah, I don't have the Super Rod. I do have the Good Rod. That's okay. We'll do it with a good rod. 
My odds are better with a good rod. Sorry, with the super rod, but eh, it's 10%. I'll get it eventually. Uh, what are some other ones? Uh, some of them require you to take photos of things. They don't seem to trigger for me. Um, some of them are just like, there's one in a certain challenge that requires you to take a certain shortcut, and it just doesn't trigger even if you obviously take the shortcut and they mention, like, someone dialogues that you take a shortcut, so there's a bit of that. Um, some other things as well, uh, the game has a, a weekly, uh, just kind of, you know, tune in, do the objectives kind of weekly challenge for a special car. I, I've noticed that the ones requiring, um, you do, uh, or I've got one that says do a showcase, it's not triggering on me, um, so there's that. Uh, I, th the, the, the only other, like, actual, like, lingering issue that I did have is that, uh, there's one, and this one's really minor, there's one stunt jump, uh, one PR jump, danger sign as they refer to them in the game, uh, which overlooks the town and kind of the northern part of the map, and, uh, I took... I took my Jesco, and I went zoom straight over it, and 850 meters in, uh, I am definitely on top of the town, so I land on the building, and then phase straight through it and through the ground, and then uh, at some point I'll load back, or I'll just respawn back onto the ground, and obviously not have completed the objective, but it's just like, it's incredibly easy to do that, like, and legit, if, if any of you guys are there, like, try it, like, just legit, like, trick out a Jesco. Do that jump, and you get the Jesco as um, as a, a mock for something, I forgot what it was, but it's like, it, you don't have to try hard to get the Jesco, it's just one of the objectives you do, so. That being said, I've really enjoyed playing the game so far, I think it's ending at around the point that I would like it to end, I think that's the perfect point for any kind of AAA modern game. Don't know, outstay your welcome. What, what Forza Horizon does really well for me is that it presents a lot of, like, different kinds of, uh, events. I really enjoyed the variety in the map. There's a, there's a volcano. I'm a sucker for volcanoes. There's a, there's a beach. There's a desert. There's a swamp. Uh, there's some really mounty area, uh, mountainy areas. There's towns. There's, uh, kind of like this nice little, you know, nested city bit with tunnels going under it. Um, you know, it got, uh... Not, not airports, but like, well, all the airports, basically. You got, like, a lot of variety in, like, places uh, that the game takes place in. Uh, dirt arena. Um, just, yeah, a, a, lot of, a lot of different places. The car variety is pretty alright, I'd say. I still feel like Forza really likes its, uh, its like, you know, prototypes and, and hypercars and that kind of stuff. There's a style. This is a rarer chance in the... And the, um, lick a tongue, so it's good that I've got it. Uh, I get to go with Leech Life, which is a very weak move. Whoa! That is a lot of damage. So, I'm glad I can leave it at that. Uh, I got some great balls, so. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful not to use that, that master ball. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, another set. I really liked the, um, the objectives, uh, that you had to do as well, like with all the, you know, the, there's one bit where you're a stunt driver, there's one where you become a car wrestler, like a, like a Mexican wrestler, but you wrestle in cars. Uh, there's one where it's like, someone's got like a, kind of, Vendetta against another guy, and you just beat, like, bratty rich kids. Um... Like, all, all of them, I'd say, you know, decently entertaining, at least. You know, if they provide some context for a bunch of things. So yeah, so, anyway, this guy's asking for... It appears at night? I guess it does, but, like... Like, I couldn't catch the sight. What? What's it holding on to? Isn't it cute? And it gives you the water stone. Okay. There's two more he can ask for, and I swear, if he picks, if he picks the last one, 
very loyal to its trainer. It's supposed to roll. Okay, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> All right. Hot doggo. Hot doggo, it's one of them. Ah, oh, that's a growler. Isn't it cute? That's so kind of you. Thanks. This is a token of my appreciation. And he finally gives me the Firestone. This is the one item I've been longing for in the entire game. I've been going, man, I really wish I had a Firestone. Because I <laughs> decided to pick Growlithe ages ago. And then I kind of went, oh, when, when do I get the opportunity to evolve him? And this is the only Firestone I think is in the game. And you have to just show him the exact Pokemon that I wanted to train. So now I've got the Firestone. I have the ability to evolve Growlithe, but he is five levels away from learning Flamethrower. And I think I can be patient, and that's why I've kept the experience share on him. I think I can be patient and let him get that Flamethrower uh, attack. It's not necessarily the best fire type attack, but I'd say it's the most well-rounded one. Fire Blast has uh, more, uh, more power, but it suffers from... Uh, accuracy and its PP is low. Flamethrower is the best of both worlds, where it's like, it's pretty good, it's really good. Oh wait, that was three years ago. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's reshuffle that uh, party again. I think I'm gonna need Cut again. So, let's uh, get rid of Flash Fly. And Oddish. And Staryu. Goodbye, Staryu. And let's take out... Uh, Herc is still sitting there. Definitely gonna need Cut and Rock. Herc would actually be, like, slightly decent. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna sit tight on Herc for the moment. <laughs> yeah. But no, I've, I've definitely enjoyed, uh, Forza Horizon 5. Uh, yeah, I'm at that point where it's like, I've kind of done everything. Like, the last thing I've really got to do is do uh, a handful of those um, rival events. They're basically just like time trials. Um, and once I've done like a fair bit of those, I feel like I'm gonna be sitting pretty with 1300 of the 1800 accolades. A lot of the remaining ones are ones that are just, you know, I might gradually get it over time. Uh, but yeah, no, I've definitely enjoyed it. The game ran really well on my system. I've got a 1080 Ti, so it's not like, it's not new, but it's definitely like really good for when it came out, so it, it's, you know, it's held up well, but like I'm playing at like a solid like 80 FPS on 1440p Ultra, it just, it's held really well. Uh, you can get a bunch of stuff out of here, uh, is there anything really worthwhile? I might as well just like look it up, I don't think there is. No, not really. There's one thing, but... just a bunch of people in here. I don't think there's particularly anything. Yeah, I don't know, actually. Alright, anyways, uh, how about I'll circle around to this room, because this room's kind of interesting. It's a little restaurant. You used to get the uh, coin case in here, but you actually get the leftovers now, which is like, <laughs> like the de facto just like best hold item in the game. Uh, I don't really know who to put it on. I would actually put it on no one, boy. Has he got the Quick Claw? Uh, stats. He does have the Quick Claw. That Quick Claw is, like, working out, though. It actually is doing pretty okay, so... I don't know, who do you put it on? Maybe Chicky. Just for fun. Chicky is bulky, so... You gotta hold on to that, uh, leftovers, though. It's good stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, the leftovers will heal you for 1 16th of your health every single turn. More, chef! Uh, and it's, it's just like, it's so good, because it's like a healing item in any, you know, RPG. Uh, the only other thing I think that's particularly in, uh... What, what else is in the apartment store that I'm missing out on? Uh, a bunch of good TMs, Hidden Power, Sunny Day, Protect, Rain Dance, Sandstorm... Male, calcium, it kind of looks the same as always. Uh, and you can redeem, behind <laughs> bulletproof glass, you can redeem your coins and continue your gambling addiction for a bunch of uh, TMs. Uh, that is Double Team, Psychic, and Hyper Beam. Psychic is actually a really good one, um, if anyone can learn it. 
And you can also trade it for some Pokemon. And I believe those are the same Pokemon that you could get in uh, blue, I believe. I might be wrong. So yeah, there's that. Uh, time to tackle on a gym. This tree can be cut! Uh, do I have a leveling disparity? I think Babat has actually got a, a finally a turn to tackle on the gym. So, like, yeah, like, uh, original, oh my gosh. This gym is great! Only girls are allowed in here! Oh my gosh. Okay, so, anyway, here's a gym. It's the grass gym. It's got grass-type trainers. Uh, how many trainers we got? Four trainers. So, this will probably <laughs> sweep over quite quickly. Uh... Well, no, yeah, game, game's good, runs fine. Um, I think there's some notes with the soundtrack. I still find Horizon soundtrack, um, as, at least as of Horizon 3, 4, and 5, they're all a little bit on the not as good as other driving games kind of sides. I guess they're better than Motorsport, not having really any licensed songs, but uh, I've definitely found that, like, you know, there's licensed games out there that do, like, way better soundtracks. Uh, Horizon seems to pick a weird array of very recent songs, and none of them are particularly, like, amazing. Like, you know, as much as, like, people know the Foo Fighters, it's like, I don't know if anyone really, like, likes stuff right off their newest, newest album. Um, uh, what else is one? There's the Grubhub song in there. That's, that's one that gets me. That's kind of scary, but okay. Uh, so, yeah, I, I got some quirks with the music. Um, but yeah, no, generally, I'd say very solid game. It's... As, as, as much like glowing praise as maybe I've made it sound like, I also want to say it's a very popcorn-y kind of game. As in, it's a game that everyone will enjoy and no one will... Well, maybe some people will love. But it's a game that's meant to be enjoyed and not loved. Uh, so it's, a, it's definitely a game that will take up a bit of your time and you will most likely enjoy it, even if you aren't necessarily a driving game person. And that's one thing I, I mentioned last week, and I've said, like, that's really amazing, is that this is a game that's kind of out-popularizing Call of Duty right now, at least just for the short term. But I'd say with those, like, weekly events, and also with the major expansions kind of setting a bit of a noise last time, like when Horizon 3 did its Hot Wheels DLC, and then when Horizon 4 did its LEGO DLC, I think they've made a name for, like, actually, like, totally consistent DLCs. And I, I actually do appreciate that, so, um, you know, we'll probably see some decent stuff coming out of, uh, this game over the course of the year. Uh, so, yeah. And, and, uh, given that it's on the Xbox Game Pass, like, and this is my favorite part, I paid one singular dollar. I have binged this game <laughs> in one week, I still have another, like, 12 weeks out of my Game Pass. It expires at the end of January. Um... You like, a uh, skip loom, hop, hip, and jump off as well? That's good fun. Jump off is, uh, grass flying, I believe. But... None of them are particularly amazing, I find. I don't know. I've never seen anyone, like, legit run jump off. I'm gonna have to look into that one. Listen, I love second gen, but like, I don't know, man. Jump off is just, it's a Pokemon. That and like Sunken. Like, just the most, like, you know, under liked Pokemon from this generation. Uh, as the grass type gym, it's remarkably grass type. I don't think there's any questions about, like, anything here. So if you've got any flying type Pokemon, or in a better case, <laughs> a flying poison type, they've got absolutely nothing that can take you on. I feel like I could just take the take the gym later while I'm at it. Just don't waste any time. Let's go right in. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, my favorite part of this game is the fact that I've not paid for it. I have played it at like this minimum entry price, and I feel like I've gotten my value pretty much out of it. Like. You know, I'm definitely gonna not be able to play the, the weeklies after my Xbox Game Pass is up at the end of the three months, if I choose to not renew it. We'll see. Um, but I'll definitely say that, like, I picked up the pass to play this game, I've played this game, and now I feel kind of good. And this is in this weird, weird point for the Xbox Game Pass, because, like, they do... These promos are ridiculous, 
I wouldn't have minded paying just the regular $11 for one month to play this game for one month. But I also would have probably put down the game at the same time. And that's a, that's a problem that I think Microsoft is going to need to like toss up. Is like, I think this game's really popular because it's also very available. Uh, oh, all the way from Jota. Huh. I didn't realize that you wished to challenge me. Okay. What? I mean, everyone else in this gym was just saying like, oh, can't believe a boy is in here. And then like the one person who like legit runs this place like is very unaware of why anyone else would come in here. So, uh, her party, and I'm probably gonna sweep through it. She starts off with this level 42 Tangela. It's got Vine Whip, Bind, Giga Drain, and Sleep Powder. I'd imagine the Sleep Powder combo with Vine Whip is probably gonna wreck me. But you're going with Bind, which is an interesting move. I guess, uh, Tangela is bulky, so makes sense that Tangela's, um, you know, gone for some of the easy damage. Uh, unfortunately, Tangela is not fast and has red shoes. So, you know what we do to people with red shoes. Uh, so does that. Um, what are they gonna go with? Victory Bell. Victory Bell is uh, maybe the strongest Pokemon. Uh, level 46, it's got Sunny Day, Synthesis, Acid, and Razor Leaf. But you've got Sunny Day, but you don't have to set up for it. Sunny Day is a double-edged sword as well, because uh, it raises the power of Fire-type attacks, and if you're trying to be bulky, Trying to get a fire type attack off during this is a bit weird. Uh, there's your Hyper Potions fan, which actually I feel like doesn't help because you probably want to cycle to your Pokemon who does have Solar Beam instead of taking as much time as possible for me to get up to attacking you with Solar Beam. I don't know. So, uh, nothing too strong here, although I definitely say if it's taking too much, too many hits, Synthesis and Razor Leaf can get in the way, or Acid if your Pokemon is actually weak to that. This is the other one, Blossom. Also level 46, also knows Sunny Day and Synthesis, but also, but instead of Acid and Razor Leaf, it knows Petal Dance and Solar Beam. So, if this Blossom lives, you know exactly what he's gonna do. Or she, it's a she. There it is. So Solar Beam, when it's sunny, hits you immediately. Unfortunately, it, I quad resist, so... It, I don't know, man. They, they've got a strat, and I've got a strat, and it's called using wing attack constantly. Good old Babat. Good stuff. The hot dog hit level 46? I've not been paying attention. I've just been talking about Vorza. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd say, I mean, definitely, I'd say if you've got the Xbox Game Pass, give it a go. Because, legit, like, if I could binge it in a week, uh, I think it would have taken a total of maybe like 30, maybe 40 hours seems like a lot. I don't think I've had that much time this week. Uh, so I'm going to say 30. Um, and that's me kind of knowing like some ins and outs. Like I know of like, you know, the best way to, or the fastest way to play a Forza is to get the, the fast travel boards and then you can fast travel around. That makes your life a lot easier. There you go, so now I got the rainbow badge. That was a delightful match, I felt inspired. Please have this TM. It is Giga Drain. It is a wonderful move that drains half the damage and puts the thingy. There you go, that's cool. Losing leaves a bitter aftertaste. Ah, uh, yeah, it does. Okay, well, that was a gym, so. <laughs> that's half the gyms, that is four gyms down. Uh, my goal in this stream is to maybe get two more. We'll see. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be on the, the road to fighting a lot of trainers. Um, I don't know actually how many trainers are on the way, but my goal is to head west. And then we'll go from there. I don't know what that guy's doing standing there. I think I can actually say hi as well. Yeah. You know what my favorite part as well? There's some Pokemon you get by surfing here. And it's just Muck and Grimer. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Amazing. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, no. Definitely, I'd say give it a go. Um, and I'd probably say it's the big AAA game of this year. It actually feels like it's 
that big AAA game that everyone will play of this year. And uh, yeah, it's kind of surprising, I guess. I, I just wouldn't have expected that Forza, of all things, would get that widespread kind of popularity. I think it's more like, maybe it's a bit of wonderful timing. And just like, you know, some great marketing, whatever. Uh, we got, we gotta go up north, come on, I've got the cut Pokemon. Uh, so I think the biggest reason why you go up north is because that's the only, uh, grass on the route. If you cruise down Cycling Road, you'll end up in Fuchsia City. Well, good on you. Uh, so available here is Grimer, uh, not Firo, because it's daytime. Uh, Murkrow, because it's nighttime. And also a 5% chance of Muck and Slugma. Uh, you like this, like, stop? Like a game is doing like some check and then checks you on the bike. On your bike, Sunny Jim. I I always hate this route because it's just it's a bit too wide. So I don't know. We'll go down then up and down. Wow, that's a cool bicycle. Yeah, it is. So I think there's just a handful of trainers to fight on this way. Oh, this guy's got a magma. It's starting to get... Actually, I don't know if it's starting to get a little high level, because it's level 32. That's not really much high level. Uh, yeah, I, I'm i going to be real interested in how much money Microsoft does make out of Forza Horizon 5, given that me and maybe a lot of other people will be only playing it for that limited amount of time. Uh, given that the Xbox Game Pass has been a thing for a couple of years, I think... Maybe Microsoft is quite aware of how much money they make off new games, and maybe it's working out. Maybe in doing this, it gets a lot of people to pay for one month of Xbox Game Pass and call it a day. Maybe even more than one month. Who knows? Maybe it converts people into actually buying the game as well. That's another kind of lost... Lost? That, that, that's another outcome that is very favorable, is getting the double whammy. And uh, they definitely couldn't be on that one with uh, Forza Horizon, so... Yeah, like I did pay for the Game Pass for a couple of months, and then at a later point I bought the game, because I was like, hey, I want to play that DLC, and it was good fun. Uh, I will probably not play this DLC when it comes out day one, I'll probably just play it whenever, but, yeah, no, I've, yeah, it's been really good, and, I mean, considering I can ramble on for that long about a driving game, that's gotta mean something, so... Uh, I think some of the issues I was seeing of, of like, server dying... Yeah, the servers do, like, you know, but <laughs> they're not very stable. I definitely, like, get tuned out of, uh... Not out of any races, but definitely, like, just while I'm free roaming, someone will, or, like, it'll sometimes just go, you've been disconnected from the server, and def definitely day one it was, like, struggling a bit. Uh, it seems okay day two onwards. Um, but definitely, yeah, like... I'd say I was struggling with it, not just like, yeah, I'm just gonna tune out of the online for a bit and then come back in later. Ah, Weezing's too fast and too, too self-destructive. That's not gonna do too much, is it? Self-destruct's a strong attack, but you know, against the power of having defense. I'm probably gonna switch away from Babat because I think he's probably getting a little too much love. Um, so I'm gonna go. Chicky's a bit of a risky, risky biscuit because uh, the magmas. Uh, by the way, once you're at the bottom of the route, I love how it keeps forcing you down. Uh, once you're at the bottom of the route, this is my favorite part. Ready? Oh, there's there's two guys at the bottom here. Cycling road is a quick shortcut to Celadon. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's incredibly bad. For sure. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you guys have been playing anything cool, uh, you can feel free to leave it in the comments. And, bonus points! Bonus points, and this is a wonderful segue. While you're down in the comments section on YouTube, if you're on Twitch, I don't know what you do. Just put it in the chat, I don't know. If you're on YouTube, uh, please leave a dislike on this video. Because YouTube has gotten rid of its dislike number. So it means nothing if you hit that button. Maybe there's some analytics stuff? Maybe there's, like, things? I don't know. Uh, this is a, an interesting discussion point. I've been on YouTube, like, way too long to, like, you know, I'm pretty aware of, like, all the incarnations of things that they did. I remember at one point, I'm pretty sure they teased making it a like-dislike percentage rather than numbers. 
I don't think that really went through in any way. Uh, and back in the day when it used to be five stars, and you could give it, you could give things three stars if you were that kind of guy. I understand, I actually do understand getting rid of the, the star rating because most people were only doing, you know, good or bad. So upvote, downvote, sure. Um, hiding the numbers of specifically the downvotes is an interesting angle because you hide the comparison. And what does hiding the comparison do? Well, I think the, the reason why they're doing it is to, you know, stop people from worrying about things getting review bombed effectively, downvote spammed. Uh, here's a Dodrio, that's cool. Uh, but on the flip side, what do I as a viewer get out of that? Well, if I see the dislike ratio on a video, I get to know how, like, well, not only the quantity of people who actually do, like, go ahead and dislike a video, because I, th I think people are smart enough to see how many videos, like, or out of all the videos that they've watched on YouTube, they're able to see, like, oh, like, here's a video that's got so many views, like, and yet a lot of people have given it the dislike, because you can give it a dislike without technically giving it the view as well. Remember that. If you go to a video, click dislike fast enough, you didn't count as a view. I hate where the Pokemon Center is in, in Fuchsia. It's absolutely horrendous that it's over there. So, um, but yeah, uh, so I, I'm aware of things that get, uh, this like bombed, but also, and this is an interesting one that I think, um, uh, I think Linus gave this, uh, an interesting point. I'm gonna just fly up to the top. I don't have fly on me. I've got the car. Well, we're gonna cycle up to the top. Very slowly. It's walking pace all the way up. You're gonna like it. Uh, okay, nothing in the middle. The cycling road layout is just hilarious because it's just. It doesn't convey the idea that it's going downhill very much. It's just, just mechanically it's going downhill. That's it. Um, but yeah, no, Linus brings up a good point, um, and maybe someone brought it up to him. Uh, where, uh, how many times have you gone to a video and then it's been a fake video, and you can tell it's a fake video because of its dislike ratio? That's something where it's like, as a viewer, that kind of use case is now gone from you. So you actually can't tell a spam video by looking at its, uh, looking at its like-dislike ratio. And my favorite part as well is that, like, creators have had the ability to hide the like-dislike ratio. So somehow the like-dislike ratio uh, still hints people off that something can be spam. Like, people are at least reasonably aware of things legitimately being liked or disliked. Um, uh, the other one, and I saw Ricky Berwick give this answer, was uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog film trailer, and that dislike ratio was something that was so significant, and maybe you could say, maybe it wasn't <laughs> the only source of, uh, of, like, oh, it was critically panned, the look of Sonic in that trailer, that original trailer, but, uh, you know, definitely you could say it's emblematic of it, and then they changed the design, and people definitely liked it more. And so that's one thing where the dislike ratio does give uh, the ability for introspection, and the ability for self-critique, is that you look at it and you go, oh, okay, like, something I did was not very well liked, I can readdress that, or I could not, and maybe you could do something like that. I don't know if I've done anything that's been hugely disliked, uh, in that way. <laughs> I think most of my YouTube videos get, like, handful of likes, dislikes, so I don't know. I don't think I can spot any trends. Which is why, let's push the dislike ratio on this video really high. Just give it a dislike, it really doesn't matter. I don't play this game for the analytics, bro. I play it for the fun. Uh, I think that was it. There's only a handful of trainers on this route, so there's not really too many. Yeah. Uh, yep, I guess that's Cycling Road. Cycling Road at night, even. Even better. Uh, Fuchsia City is... Uh, used to be a kind of interesting place because this would be where you'd get surf in the game, so suddenly a lot of things will open up. I'm actually gonna go through here because I'm pretty sure there's something through here as well. Wow, okay. I remember, yeah, in the actual, in the original game, this, guy's, this place is a nightmare to navigate through. It used to be like a zoo. 
I think. That was the gist of what they're going on over here. It kind of looks a bit empty. I Honestly, I feel like this is like the most like unfinished place in the, uh, in the, the remake. There is a berry. It's a burnt berry. Wow. I think you actually might need cut to go through here. Because it's like, there's, I mean, yeah. Because yeah, now I'm over here. And this is on the other side of this. Which is legitimately on the other side. Wow, it is. Okay. Uh, so, those of Studio View who have played the first game, by the way, uh, will know that this is where the Safari Zone is. It, it's just completely brick-walled. And it just goes, the Warden is traveling abroad. Therefore, the Safari Zone is closed. And yes, that does mean that the Safari Zone is not in this game. That's one corner cut that this game does do. Uh, it is reintroduced in Heart Gold Soul Silver, but in this game, it's just not. It's just not there. There is another. It's completely empty. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Some of, some of the uh, quirks of this uh, this uh, Johto or Kanto part is just kind of showing. Like this is one for my grandpa. This is the Safari Zone Warden. At least he was. He decided to go on vacation and took off overseas all by himself. He quit running Safari Zone just like that. And that's all you get. And that's all this town has got to do. Apart from a gym. Which I'm about to go up against right now. That's amazing. Uh, so yeah. Let's head into the gym. Into the game. Uh, this gym. Uh, note that there's two sprites. They look almost similar. And it's a little bit tricky on the Game Boy. And everyone looks like the gym leader. But they're not. So, yeah, that's that's my fault for clicking on him. Bulbasaur? I'm not coming with the right Pokemon on this one. No, not really. Let's get Hot Doggo a bit of love. And speeding up that leveling a bit. Is there any Hot Doggo's already level 47? I feel like... Ah! <laughs> I feel like, um... He's probably gonna get the, uh get to level 50 in time for the end of the part, and then I can finally get the evolution, and we've, we've got that sitting there. 13 streams, and only that. Oh, and he's getting me with a sweet scent. Which is really not worthwhile at all, so. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't really know what to, what to think of YouTube removing features. In fact, actually, this has, like, been the first time in a long while that YouTube has done an action that's really, like, peeved people off. Apart from... Uh, I, uh, they had something about the ambassador program. That was the one of, like, people who, who would, like, pay, I forgot even what it was. I, I forgot completely what it was. That's how bad it was. And not implemented for various reasons, but, um, and isn't that a bit of a weird one? That's a, that's a tangent as well, just... A lot of these, like, big social media companies, like, they'll often introduce, like, a lot of features that just don't click with people. Um, as, a, as an avid user of Discord, like, legit, like, Discord, like, half of its features have only recently appeared because, uh, Gilded is a competing service. Like, someone has made a competing service and suddenly now, oh, like, we need customizable, uh, avatars on all servers, we need to improve our video chat features, we need to add stickers, we need to add calendar events, because here's a competing service that actually was offering all this stuff, and they weren't charging people for it, so that's why, yeah, that's why Discord's kind of speed, speed around implementing a lot of stuff. And they probably should, considering how much investor money they're getting, but, you know, at least Discord isn't doing, like, crazy stuff like, uh, allowing people to pay to edit their tweets. That's an interesting one. Um, I'm trying to think of another site that's done something weird like that recently. All I can think is Meta, but like that's just a name change. That's nothing really too bad. Uh, I was gonna say Fluffer, but uh, it seems that this is still not working out in Fluffer's favor, so we're going back to Hot Doggo. Um, because Nidoqueen's Queen's ground type. So I'm caught out again. Back to the flame wheel. I thought I was just getting a lot of love because uh, he's just high level. <laughs> just naturally has, you know, those level stats. He's still got a bit of room. Like, like he's not particularly the strongest. Even if he's the highest level on my team. This is like the Dragonair effect I had in Pokemon Blue. Where I was like, yeah, Dragonair was the highest level on my team, but... 
totally wasn't the best Pokemon on my team because he still had some room to go with Evolution and the rest of my Pokemon were rather stacked in terms of their stats. And I think they are in my case as well. Well, at least Fluff is getting a bit of love. Darn it, I wanted to win. Too bad! You get no win. I'm just gonna put Hot Dog up the front, Mo. Call it a day. Who is this? Whoosh! Ha <laughs> You betcha, dude. I'm Janine. Cool. Alright. Ah. I've got one last lingering topic. I- my brain is trying to think there's maybe another topic. But I've got one- one definitely big topic of the week. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about this week. This has been a kind of interesting week. Uh, the big one is, uh, in the realms of games that have come out, uh, some of you may have purchased, uh, the Grand Theft Auto Definitive Edition Trilogy? I'm not too sure how they've marketed the name, um, because it's like, yeah, you're buying Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. This is the trilogy, as in the three games they made, including three and not including four, but between that. Uh, there's one more trainer, I think I might be able to get away with it. Uh, this is the last one, isn't it? So sorry at this point, I'm only joking. Dang it! I've been baited, okay, well. You know what's the worst part? Uh, so this is the joint. There was one more trainer. I was gonna fight them. All right, you're gonna have to acknowledge that they have a that last trainer has a level 30 gloom, two level 30 glooms, and a level 34 Arbok. But I'm not fighting them. I'm fighting this person. Uh, so this is Janine. Uh, her gym one. She's not the original gym leader. That's because Koga is in the Elite Four, if you remember. So the original gym leader is just chilling here. Um, I'm going out with Fluffer because actually I can take on a lot of a lot of well no. I can take on just as Crobat with Fluffer. Uh, so she starts with Crobat, level 36, Wing Attack, Confuse Ray, Supersonic, and Screech. There was the Screech, there's the Supersonic, it missed, and this Crobat is gonna be Crow Dead. Uh, yeah, this person's Pokemon is like 10 levels lower than every other gym leader. Uh, I feel like canonically they've, they're probably making out like, um, you know, she's a new gym leader, and therefore she's just not as trained, but it's kind of bizarre. Uh... Let's go on with the Noam boy on this one. So, we got Weezing, level 36. It knows Sludge Bomb, Smog, Toxic, and Explosion. Uh, and I've got Surf, so... And we're gonna just go with that. Uh... You know, GDA remastered stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll continue at the end of the, the gym, because I know I'm going to keep interrupting it. Oh, I got toxic. Oh. Fortunately, I'm not going to be using no one boy the, the whole fight, but oh, it gets you, man. It gets you. Well, at least it's level 45 now. And it's got the PlayStation Network on its side. Uh, Ariados. Ooh. Back up, back up. We've got, uh, a spot for no for Hot Doggo. Ariados here is Bug Poison type. Uh, level 33, no String Shot, Nightshade, Giga Drain, and Scary Face. Giga Drain is a rather interesting attack. Uh, note, by the way, again, no, like, String Shot is the bug type attack, but it's also not a damaging bug type attack. Seems that no one likes that, so. Yeah, I got Hot Doggo a bit of love. Oh, that's my phone going off. Cool. And how are you going with another Weezing? Well, I'm going in with another Noam boy. It's the same Noam boy, but sure. Uh, this Weezing is level 36. It knows the exact same moves as the other level 36 Weezing. So as long as he doesn't self-destruct on me, that's cool. I might be able to kill him in one go. Maybe. Maybe not. And 
There we go. Easy stuff. Cool. Alright, uh, last one is Venomoth, which is bug poison again. Uh, no, it's Toxic, Psychic, Foresight, and Supersonic. Psychic is a big spanner in the wrench kind of attack, so watch out if you... You put a die hit on it? Why? You might live this. You actually might live this. But like... No. Okay, that... That was very confusing. Oh well. Yeah, it sucks that I kind of mismatched, because the worst part is that once you beat the gym leader, you can't fight the lingering person who is sitting over there and confusingly... Yeah, you're so tough, I have a special gift. It's toxic. Now you can have it as well. Ah, it irks me. I want to become better than both father and you. Because, yeah, you're not gonna... Yeah. Like, and the worst part is, yeah, people will just say, like, the, the line of dialogue they say when you have beaten them. Uh, after you've beaten the gym leader. I don't know, that's a, that's a bit odd. Uh, so there's... I believe you can't actually go south in order to continue on. And I can actually show that off as well. So the only way to actually get to the gym in the south is to go the long way around. And so, yeah. The only three remaining gyms are all the ones on the west coast of Kanto, which is kind of interesting uh, how, how it goes. Oops, I've dropped down from the ledge, but I can sail around as well, just to show off this wonderful pathway that exists. Sorry, this road is closed for construction. If you want to get to Cinnabar, you better go south from Pallet Town. Who knows how long it would take to move this boulder. I I don't even know if it does move later in the game, but... Yeah, no, this guy just goes... Yeah, no. <laughs> the volcano blew up. Can't go this way, so... And that's kind of interesting that, like, yeah, they've got these five gyms all around here. And nothing does stop you from continuing to go over to the side, but... Still, there's, uh... And I remember this part of the... Let's play taking ten years. But, let's just fight some more trainers and have a bit of a chat. As we go. I don't think there's anywhere near as many trainers as there were. Maybe there are. <laughs> nah, it's okay. We got R2. Uh, so yeah, the Grand Theft Auto uh, Definitive Edition stuff. I remember seeing the trailer like two weeks ago. They announced it and then it came out in such a short amount of time. It's really interesting how game developers do this stuff. Like. Was the idea of these remasters teased beforehand? I think they were, but like, are we relying on tease, and then release, and- or tease, and then announce, and then release all within like, a two month window? Like, that's a bit of a crazy announcement schedule. Uh, but I saw the announcement trailer, and I thought it looked... Eh, it did look a bit eh. It didn't quite look... Um, not saying it was wrong, but... Like, we're calling it Definitive Edition, and it's like, oh, there's some, you know, there's definitely color grading, which I feel like is a big one. Why do, why does every game mess with the color palette of these older titles? I, I can completely understand why if the answer is it's a Unreal Engine 4 port or recreation by mobile game developers, and obviously they're not being paid much to do it. Like, that's a very cynical, but kind of probably the view. Um, and that's, that's a huge issue, actually. Like, that's something. I've got to do my homework! Well, I guess Hot Doggo is not getting as much love just for now, but that's okay. Because, uh, I think this is gonna be, uh, a route where I can send... Oh, what does it say? Oh, I'll go on with Chicky. Yeah, I'll go on with Chicky. Chicky's got the leftovers, so maybe this actually can be tanked. Ah! Alright. Uh... Yeah, no, like, the, the... A couple of things stood out to me. One, the colors looked very, very, yeah, just off. Um, you could really start feeling the Unreal Engine 4, like, leaking out of, you know, the lighting and all that stuff. And that's one thing where it's like, yeah, like, when people do control how those engines present themselves, the games look pretty alright. When they don't, 
it looks like they were made in Unreal Engine 4. And it's okay to some extent, but not to all the extent. And this is definitely an all the extent kind of issue. It's like, this is GDA. And specifically, this is GDA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. These are games that have reasonably, like, they've aged like, uh, how, sh how do I say this? What's the best analogy? They've aged like two wines mixed together. Uh, and so there's, uh, and, and after, after they've aged, like, you know, some of it sifts to the top, some of it sifts to the bottom, and it's great for some of it, and it's okay for some of it. Um, and you can definitely tell at what points it's great and it's okay. That's a terrible analogy, but you know what I'm- you know where I'm going at. GDA, particularly the old ones, are great for their mishmash of driving, world building, um, just, you know, that tongue-in-cheek kind of attitude of the errors that they're making fun of, uh, as well as, you know, being decent games for variety, and on top of that, they're really filled with content. I think that's one bit where GDA has always been such a value kind of game because they've been like, long and yet consistent experiences, uh, and especially San Andreas, like, that game is just horrendously long. Um, but then, uh, yeah, like, on the, on the other hand, like, aiming a gun is very finicky in these games, and the driving, uh, it's not as good as other driving games, especially around 2004, there's, there's definitely some better driving driving games. Uh, it, it feels very box car but, you know, it's okay, it works. Um, and if anything, combining it in the open world is definitely something that captured the world by storm when GDA 3 came out. Like, geez, like, how many games started to try and copy-paste GDA 3? I, I remember talking about Driver, which came before, and you could feel the proto kind of Grand Theft Auto in that, um, in that game. But not on the level of what GDA 3 actually managed to accomplish. And suddenly every game wanted to be GDA 3. And that's crazy. Um, I think Vice City as well, like, you know, taking that sudden success and going, hey, like, and, and I know Grand Theft Auto was a decently successful franchise before, but like, particularly taking, like, just this wildfire success and turning it into something that became such a cultural icon. Like, um, how many times have we fought a teacher in this game? There's always been schoolboys, but yeah. I think this may be the first time I've seen Apom as well. I can't recall seeing Apom before. Alright. Uh... But yeah, no, I, I, I really do enjoy the, the GDA trilogy. I can't tell which... I'd probably say San Andreas is my favorite, but that's because I do really like the, the driving... Um, kind of controls and mechanics in that game. And there's definitely a lot of just, like, variety in the driving. And on top of that, like, planes and stuff. And just, like, aircraft. Um, like, it, it really combines, like, all those forms of travel, uh, and, and transport all into, like, a really decent package. Um, and I think that's one thing where it's like, yeah, like, Vice, sorry, GDA 3 took the structure, like, you know, got the structure, like, down pat, and then Vice City got the world down pat, and then San Andreas got the, you know, mishmash of weird mechanics down pat. And suddenly now is like, you know, that's why GDA is in a real struggle <laughs> trying to top itself all the time. Because they really nailed it in three different ways. Um, and that's, I think that's one reason why GDA 4 was great and not great at the same time. Was that, uh, like, it couldn't live up to the scale of, of uh, San Andreas. And it wasn't a period piece like Vice City. Maybe it was a period piece for the... 2008 kind of climate, but, um, you know, it, it, it didn't feel like tongue-in-cheek nostalgia as much as tongue-in-cheek kind of, like, modern life kind of is a bit of a weird place. Um, and on top of that, revisiting a city and being the same franchise, uh, being the same structure, um, it definitely does feel like a game that has and hasn't aged as well. Like, it's, it's a bit of a weird one, but... GTA 4 is far beyond, and will they ever re-release GTA 4? We'll have to see. They did a, um, they did a complete edition kind of repackaging on Steam, which, honestly, I don't think anyone's got any huge complaints with that one. That's when they did chuck GTA 4 on the Rockstar launcher, 
and any existing Steam owners who still, they had to use games for Windows Live, uh, any existing owner would just get that as an upgrade for free. Cool, okay, like that's, that's fine. Nothing really too much to complain about. Um, some people do have issues with games for Windows Live, I don't know, man. Um, but this is uh, strike number one, and I'm a real big uh, advocate against this. Um, why remove old versions of games if you do technically have the legal rights to sell those old versions of games? I don't care that you have a new, fancy new, updated version, and you want to deprecate support for the old one. If so, write a note and say you're doing that. And then let me be able to buy the old one. Because these new definitive editions, first of all, I know some people like, okay, strike number two, it's missing music, but unstrike number two, let's get rid of that strike, because that music has already been gone from the 10th anniversary re releases of those games on mobile. And then Rockstar already did a kind of annoying thing where they, um, uh, they removed it from existing Steam owners' libraries. Uh, for San Andreas only. For Vice City and, uh, well not 3, because 3 doesn't use licensed music, but for Vice City, they didn't actually. They, they maintained two separate versions. They provided a, a an update for the people who already had the, the game, and an update for, or, or a new version for people who were then buying the game at that point. I'm still kind of on the fence, but I'm like, yeah, no, sure, okay. Like, you've got a version of the game that does not drastically differ. Like, sure, okay. Uh, but then, yeah, what they've done with these definitive editions is that they've, one, gotten rid of the original releases, and then two, released this new version that doesn't play, like, it's, it's a recreation of the game on different hardware and different, um, well, in, in the case of PC, it's not different hardware. Um, maybe they're 64-bit versions, like, I, <laughs> maybe we can, we can concede that a little bit, maybe? Um, but yeah, we get into this weird point on PC in particular, where I can play these old games. I can run both side by side, I can run them both at the same time, and really compare the differences, and, like, I still say, Old games can run fine. There's the only question is really like the like the the interface between your your hardware and the game itself. As long as we're still running x86 and as long as we can still do compatibility layers for 32-bit like perfectly fine like we have had over the past 10 years, um, that one catch on interacting with your with your hardware, okay, like, yeah, that's a that's a bit of a hitch on graphics cards, and to some degree it's a hitch on Alder Lake right now, that's been out for a week and that's still kind of got its, got its, uh, question marks there, but... Uh, weeping bell. But, uh, yeah, ultimately, like, it's kind of weird that you take down the old versions, especially because Yesterday, you're fine selling them. I don't get it. I, I, I only, I only understand by, like, having the, actually, no, sorry, take it back. I don't understand the, the, the definitive editions. I was gonna say, like, this is, um, like, oh, to get people to, to buy them again. But it's like, well, what stops you from selling that and the old version? Because the old version technically still would cost more to buy all three. Maybe on discounts, maybe on sales. It's... It goes down. I don't know how much they're charging for the new one because I'm on Steam. They took it off Steam because they have uh, problems with the Rockstar Launcher compatibility on Steam. Maybe it's got stuff to do with the... I don't know actually. I've really got no idea. It was on there for a moment and then it's not. So I'll double check on SteamDB maybe. Uh, but yeah, it feels like it's actually lost money because I have no intention to buy the game again. And I think people who are looking for it are either going to buy the thing that you are, you are selling anyways, or pay more for the original. Like, that's... That's something, or even better, chuck in as a bonus. And you will encourage people to buy your definitive edition anyways. That there is no reason to not have the original version in there. Other than just like file constraints or whatever. I don't... It just doesn't make sense. Um, now, you, yeah, I guess, I guess you can maybe say, well, how about on, on the Xbox Series X and Switch? One, Xbox Series X can run the old downloadable version of the game, and that one has its own question marks as well, but, uh, we can at least acknowledge that, yes, the only console that doesn't have its own previous version of 
G of Grand Theft Auto is the Switch. That's that's the only one. And you know what? That could run the mobile versions technically. I don't know, man. Uh. I just realized someone could have been yelling at me for not using Thunder Wave on that Licker Tongue. Listen, I'm gonna completely ignore your opinion now. <laughs> oh. Maybe that's why the dislike bar is so high. Oh. <laughs> that is a sweet scent, bro. Cool scent. Uh. I've forgotten how many trainers are on this way, but it's definitely a number. Oh, I guess there's, there's actually a couple of couple of spots. Like, I can go all the way up to uh, the rock tunnel, I believe, because I didn't fight the, the rock tunnel to people. So, maybe there's that. Maybe that will actually take up my, uh, my stream for the day. Ooh, Charmander's doing the Congo. Or it's the, the banana monkey. I don't know what the dance move is. I, I don't know my dance moves. Uh, I should probably mention the Pokemon available on each route as I go over here. So, that one horizontal route with the one bit of grass on the higher ledge that you had to cut on. Uh, you can get Nidorina, Nidorino, Pidgeotto in the day and Knockdown in the night, Popip in the day, Quagsire in the night, and 1% chance of Chansey, which is uh, a very interesting one if you can get it. Um, so there's that. Uh, this route has a little bit of grass at the top. Uh, that is the exact same... Listening, actually. Uh, yes, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, that's cool. <laughs> that's it. Man, Squirtle was angry! I'd be too if I got one hit by a Meganium and someone had me at level 29 and didn't involve me. Tragedy. Way. Uh, how do you get into this grass? There's a person there, and I think you gotta. Well. That's cool. You got a double cut. Oh, it's got me there. Did you battle all the gym trainers? Uh, yes. Trevor. So. so yeah, anyway, in comes these definitive editions, uh, Unreal Engine, and on top of that, people are complaining about bugs and weird models. So first of all, uh, characters look weird. I think you can tell by screenshots. Number two, the physics are off. Uh, sure, yes. Actually, there's some weird pacing issues, like some things are running faster than they probably should. And that speaks to something, and this is a problem with the PC version as well. Um, everything is locked to like a hard 30 frames a second. This person, by the way, Chansey's cute. But I don't have it. Do you have a Chansey? Want to trade it for my Aerodactyl? <laughs> like, that's a real interesting trade. So yeah, if you can stomach the 1% chance for an Aerodactyl, Sorry, for, for a Chansey, you can trade that for an Aerodactyl, and that's actually a real cool trade to have. Uh, so there's that. Um, there's another route over here. This is the same Pokemon list. And the last route that I'm going to go into before I hit the next town does not have any... Uh, or it's got fishing, but that doesn't count. Sand Slash. Yeah, it actually doesn't count. Uh, well, this is not the right Pokemon I have, is it? Back to Chicky. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think there's, there's a degree of, like, things can and certainly will look weird with a recreation of the game. And that's one thing where it's like... Uh, mm, I, actually, no, yeah, sorry. I, <laughs> I was formulating an opinion on that. and I was thinking, like, well, there are some games out there, like, especially a lot of older games, where it's like... Having the old graphics is there as a nostalgic purpose, but I don't see there being much of a practical reason why it's there. But, you know, as we start to get into newer and newer 3D titles that need to be remade, I start to go, if you're going to overhaul the graphics, as in, like, replace assets to a solid degree, uh, or, and, and this can include, like, pros, you know, post-processing or really, like, general graphic looks, if you're not just straight upscaling things, then maybe there's uh, there's a degree of going... And, and, and this is before you get into completely remaking and overhauling again, because uh, 
obviously I'm playing Pokemon. There's Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the DS remakes of these games. It's obviously not the same game. There's definitely like a lot of quirks, like they introduce a Pokemon following you the whole time. They introduce these uh, Pokemon mini game things that you can do. Uh, obviously the UI is different because it's on two screens. Obviously there's different Pokemon because there's the fourth generation of Pokemon out by then. Um, and the moves are all different. There's a lot of things different with the Heart Gold Soul Silver remix. But you can definitely say, hey, it's a reimagining of the game in the newer mechanics. And that's one thing that maybe we'll, maybe we'll see when the new um, Shining Diamond and Brilliant Pearl come out. Uh, but this, this Grand Theft Auto falls into this wonderful middle ground of it's not just straight HD upscaling, but it's also, like, certainly the same game. Like, sorry. Sorry, it's not HD upscaling, but it is, it is certainly the same game. Yes. I don't, <laughs> I've, I've formed that sentence weird. Point is, is that like they've done the effort to overhaul a substantial amount of the graphics, but it still needs to play exactly like the original version of the game. Uh, even down to most of the UI, there's a couple of UI tweaks, and I think this should be noted. I think it's great that the mini map uh, has a bit of perspective to it. I actually, I don't. I'm not, a little bit on the fence of the perspective, but the idea of like the mini map pointing, like, showing more of what's ahead of you rather than, like, having you be centered on the map is actually, like, I think that's a better feature. Um, I think it shows a little more detail, and especially a lot more detail than the GTA, well, GTA 3 didn't have a mini-map, so there you go. I'm using Surf against Sloking, whoops. Um, it's also got a, the GPS waypoint, and I think that's actually a good quality of life change, because that does get uh, a bit annoying uh, in particularly all the games, but especially, um, Vice City, I found, was actually like a bit of a pain when you didn't know the city. Um, so there's that. Like, I will, I will accept that. I'll, I'll go, yeah, that's a, that's a good change. Good on him for fixing that. This guy's got a weird variety of Pokemon, doesn't he? Give him the earthquake. <laughs> Go. Very dead. Oh, there we see Alex. How dare you mock me? Sure. All okay. right. This route is very weird. I, I've never been the biggest fan of it. My Pikachu gang. Uh, don't tell me he actually did it. He committed, didn't he? He did. Oh no. Oh no. I think I can do it? I could probably do it. <laughs> I could actually do it as well. That's the best part. I should probably send out Hercules after this. Like, hot dog goes there, done his part. Yep, okay, cool. It's a microscopic bit of experience gain. But no, yeah, he totally is gonna hit level 50. Another Pikachu, why not? Uh, so yeah, um, I think, yeah, there's a lot of, like, other small things. Uh, the not small thing is the rain in that game. Like, legit, try and find people playing that game, uh, and it's raining in the game. It's absolutely horrendous looking, and maybe that's just because I'm looking at it through video streaming services like YouTube, and it's got that wonderful YouTube compression. Like, if you ever see confetti or grass and it looks like trash on YouTube, just remember that that's just because compression algorithms are not the best. And these sites also love preserving bandwidth. So yeah, Hot Doggo is now level 50, which means Flamethrower. Can't learn more than four moves. Can you make a move for Flamethrower? Uh... This is actually a tough choice, because, like, on the one hand, I do like Flame Wheel. I also do like Takedown. I think I'm probably gonna skip 
Yeah, I, I'll get rid of Flame Wheel, because I think the amount of PP I'm gonna have, even though it's lower, just having that higher power. And just remember, I know I know Flame Wheel is physical in future games, but this is this is second gen, it doesn't matter. So now I have a much stronger attack that also has all its PP again. And I think this is actually kinda nice that I've been able to wait all this time to get flamethrower. And then get absolutely no experience because <laughs> so slow, but yeah no, flamethrower is like such a great attack, so. I'm actually glad I got that. Uh, yeah, I don't have too much to say about the GTA remasters. I should actually look up how much it is. Can we say something about calling it the Definitive Edition? Because not only is it not the Definitive Edition, because it's missing songs, uh, no more songs in the 20th anniversary releases, but also... Yeah, um, and, and let's not get into... Uh, maybe if I tap Nintendo Switch, I'll get the I'll get the Switch pricing on it. What country I'm in? New, New Zealand, of course. Get digit. Oh my gosh, where's the price? Where's the price, Nintendo? Eighty bucks! Eighty bucks! Oh my gosh. Okay, never mind. They're charging more on this. I take it all back. I take it all back. Take all I said, I'm like, oh, you, you know, they put the originals on, they'd be paying for, for more. Very did, look, right there, at the left side of the post. I don't know what you... I really don't know what you're talking about here. It could be a hidden item. I'm too lazy to look at it. Ah! Boy, in Pokemon. Oh my gosh. Uh, I should have taken off that, um... Uh, that experience share because it doesn't need it anymore. Good old Farfetch'd. Everyone loves Farfetch'd. Coolest bird Pokemon in the game. Hands down. Uh, yeah, I, it, I don't know. It just, it kind of irks me that it's like this is the only way that you're going to be able to legally purchase these games right now. Um, I will wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Different versions exist in different places. Maybe. Up to you. Who knows? Uh, so who gets the experience share now? Maybe I'll give it to Babat. You get an experience share. Because yeah, Babat is not going to get a lot of love coming up, so... Check out my Pokemon! Just look at their coloring and their plumage. Oh my gosh. I also should have evolved. <laughs> I should have used that fire zone just straight up, because there's no- I'm not waiting on anything anymore. There's no more moves. He doesn't learn anything more. He's done. Done skis. Give him the punch. Go, he's very dead. I fear this row. So yeah. Oh, I realize I've got one one last topic. Man, I'm I've I'm floating on topics this week, so I don't know. You guys thoughts on GTA thingy? Yeah, I, all I can say is like they can you know they can give whatever they can sell whatever they want, really. Like, it doesn't matter too much. But what kind of irks me is that, yeah, like, this version can be inferior. It's definitely very different. Um, I'm gonna ride all the way back because I do need to uh, do a bit of uh, party tackling. But first, I think the most important part is to finally use that Firestone. There we go. Firestone. Hot Doggo. What? Hot Doggo's evolving? I know, finally. All this time. Get that wonderful hairdo. And there he is. Hot Doggo is now Arcanine. An amazingly good fire type. And he's trying to learn extreme speed. Oh, we can learn extreme speed. Oh, I don't even need takedown anymore. Because extreme speed is, uh, it's normal, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, oh, extreme speed is so good. Alright, 
So extreme speed, you only get 5 PP, so that's the one catch on extreme speed, but it's like, it's 80 power, which puts it close, but not quite to takedown, but you don't take recoil, and it's plus 2 priority, which makes it, like, higher priority than quick attack. A lot of other priority moves are only plus 1. So extreme speed is, like, incredibly good at just, like, being a de facto move that you can just use. It's great. Oh no, it's only plus 1 in this game. Ah, oh, it's plus 2 in Gen 5 almost. Okay. So. So, it's, it's a great move. It's just doubly strong quick attack. It's so good. And, uh, let's look at some stats while I'm at it, as well. Um, so... Yeah, so, just just for note, so Bat Bat's got 136 speed, which puts it faster than most of the other Pokémon in my party, especially for the Sand Shrew. Jiki's still a bit slower, Quagsire is just you know, relying on that quick claw. <laughs> Uh, even Ampharos is not too fast. Ampharos definitely has some great, like, special attack there at 122. Uh, no, I'm boy, like, I'm surprised. I keep using, like, special attacks all the time, but, no, he's still decent. Uh, Meganium's definitely the bulkier one, sure. Uh, and then, yeah, look at those stats! And granted, it's level 50, but it's like, that is some great attacks, special attack, and speed. And so, suddenly, Hot Doggo is now just gonna be the strongest person in my party. And then, yeah, it's Bad Bat, still 100 attack, that's actually pretty okay. So, ah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. And I'm gonna need it too, because yeah, I'm gonna need a party that can beat a team of level late 70s. By, maybe not next stream, but certainly the stream after, because there's only so much left in this game. That's good fun. Going around, experiencing this stuff. We hope to see you again. Yeah, sure. I don't think I'm ever coming back to this Pokemon Center again. Uh, anyway. Too bad Hot Doggo gets to get binned. And, uh, back out, I can finally bring Herc. After ages and being in limbo. So I don't know if I should have Herc, like, sitting out here. That should be okay. Uh, I should really look into, like, TMs for Herc. What's with, like, this area over on the right here? It's, it's got nothing to do with, like, anything that you can see, right? Yeah, it's just there. Who knows? Yeah. So, topic number 89, but this will be, this will be a short one, this will take up that remaining part of the stream. Uh, I decided to give Windows 11 a bit of a try. Uh, and I know, someone's gonna say, how could you do that to your computer? Well, one, I knew I probably wouldn't have used it forever. I kind of just wanted to see how it was, and whether there was anything, like, too, you know, obnoxious lingering in the way. Uh, whether it was, um, you know, it had new things that I actually would use, uh, whether it had, um, you know, it moved things into more convenient places and introduced new workflows that I actually wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, I can safely say, Windows 11 is a lot of Windows 10. It, in fact, it pretty much is. Uh, it all hinges around that new taskbar, the bar at the bottom of the screen. Um, it is effectively redesigned, it's, uh, got, well, I mean, it's, for reference, it's tied to the Windows Explorer program, which is your file explorer. Um, and that, ex you know, file explorer is also very different, reasonably different, um, at least in some ways, like, of course, you know, it's got a browser file, so <laughs> how much different can it be? Uh, but I th think I'm okay with some of the changes to the Windows Explorer. I'm not, like... I still think it's a little weird that you can't set the, uh, the right-click action. When you right-click, it now comes up with this new custom menu that has, like, a bunch of, like, you know, generally common actions, like, oh, rename a file, or copy it, or, uh, view its properties. But, like, say you have things, like, uh, for example, 7-zip, uh, has a, please compress this file, add it to the context menu. That's not there. You gotta click on another button in that menu to bring up the old list of things that you could do. Uh, having the option to like, bring that up by default would be great. Uh, and bonus points, they've already got a shortcut. You can hit Shift F10, which is not a convenient shortcut to hit, but you can hit, uh, Shift F10 and it does work. And bring up the old menu, so okay. Um, I don't think I've got really too many other thoughts of the... Of 
the thing. Oh, is this guy gonna give me the thing? I'm the fishing guru's younger brother. I can see that you like fishing. There's no doubt in my mind that you are right. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. Take this, it's a super rod. So now I have the stupid rod. Uh, you can catch some Pokemon. Uh, your guess, I don't know. Your guess is what Pokemon are available with the super rod. I feel like it's mostly just high level uh, good rod Pokemon for the most part. I feel so content fishing while listening to some tunes on my radio. Maybe that's actually some good stuff. I think I can get Quillfish here. With the, um... With the Super Rod. That's actually a, an interesting one. This Quillfish doesn't evolve. So it's a bit weird. But yeah, all the Super Rod Pokemon are level 40. So if you actually want, like, a, a new Pokemon... That's remarkably good. Meanwhile, I'm getting no experience because... Team of Magikarps. Why have they done this to me? Oh well. Uh, so, let me talk about that taskbar. First of all, I ran into just so many, like, weird regressions of features that I had grown to love, or grown to at least accept, and have been kind of there for a while, so I'll say which ones do affect me and which ones don't. The first one, and this one does affect me, is that when you right-click the taskbar in Windows 11, the current live Windows 11, as of the 15th of November 2021, uh, when you right-click the taskbar, you get a context menu that only lists taskbar settings. You do not get, and I'm going to right click my taskbar right now, you do not get lock all taskbars, task manager, show the desktop, show windows side by side, show windows stacked. Like there's definitely a lot of things that are just there, like they, they are the taskbar settings just there on the right click. But there's a handful of things that I'm used to such as show task manager. I often find it's convenient to drag my mouse all the way down to the taskbar, right click, move it up a little bit, and click task manager. Now I know task manager is also there if you right click the start menu, but, uh, you know, having it available all along the taskbar is a feature that I've used the whole time. So okay, there's that, uh, oh, so many phone calls. My Psyduck's looking awesome. I almost caught Drowsy the other day, oh so close. They've got something out for me, man. They just keep calling. Uh, we can go left, by the way, but I'm gonna try and trailblaze up north just to, just because there's a town up north. Like, and this is, yeah, this is one weird thing about the, the level design of uh, Kanto. It's like, yeah, you've got all, like, you've got all this road between Fuchsia and then Lavender all the way over here. And then, like, yeah, legit, how many trainers have I fought, like, in every other route in Kanto combined right now? I don't think it's very high. Well, that was a Remoraid. I hope you appreciate it. I think they felt the need to have two of them. Sure. Okay. Give him another one. So, yeah, so that did irk me. It's like, hey, this taskbar has no settings in there. And you, you click on taskbar settings, and then you get given to the customization of the taskbar. Uh, so this includes a couple of things, uh, some things that some people will probably re like really note for, such as, by default, all the icons are in the center of the taskbar. Uh, why? I'm not too sure. But you can choose to move them all to the left again. That's okay, sure. You can show and hide the Cortana, but it's not the Cortana button, it's actually just the search button now. There's no specific Cortana, I think it's still there, but... I don't know, it's just search now, so okay. Um, you can also... you've got... your workspaces, like your, your virtual desktops, and then there was one other button. Your widgets! It's got weird widgets, like it's the Apple Command Center. Um, or Windows 8. <laughs> actually, yeah, hold on. <laughs> Wait, didn't we do this already? So yeah, it's, it's got that. I turned all those off, because I've got no, you know, I don't look at stocks. I don't look at news. I don't really need the weather all the time, like... I don't know, it's, it's a bunch of features I'm not gonna use. So there's that. Okay, so now my taskbar is just the start menu. Oh sorry, it would also include the, the search bar, but here's the thing, if you hover over the search bar, it shows you, uh... I forgot what it shows you. Off the top of my head. It kept showing up something. And then I ran into this weird bug where every time I would hover over the taskbar, it would just 
imagine I was hovering over any icon on the taskbar. So that might be my notifications icon, that might be my network settings, it might be my volume slider, and it will show whatever tooltip was on that all the time. And I found that was very annoying and I couldn't figure that one out and that just, it just happened. So okay, there's that. Uh, so then, let's talk about the area on the right. Well, first of all, I'm not a guy who moves my taskbar away from the bottom of the screen. But if you are... We're in spooky town. This is this is what I get about talking about cursed Windows versions as well. If you are that kind of person who moves their taskbar around... Oh, your radio needs an expansion card to tune into it. Oh. The director of the radio station show... Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's here. It's here. It's cool. To the north of Lavender is the rock tunnel. Go through it to get to the power plant. We can heal your Pokemon to perfect health. Cool. Okay. So yeah, so you can heal up here. Uh... Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple of things in Lavender Town, such as cursed music. Um... I believe there's this person here who has all this Pokemon. Some cold-hearted people stop caring for their Pokemon. Grandpa takes in the poor homeless Pokemon and takes care of them. Are you a grandpa? This food does live here, but he's not home right now. He should be at the Soul House. Oh, okay. Hi there. People come from all over to pay their respects to the departed souls of Pokemon. Oh yeah, so they turned the graveyard, they turned this building into the graveyard. Um, for those who have played the original game, Welcome, you appear to be raised, you Pokemon in a kind of loving manner. Please offer their condolences for the souls of the departed Pokemon. Yep, Pokemon still die, just remember that. There's nothing really in here apart from just people talking about their dead Pokemon, but... Um, yeah, the kind of interesting thing is that they turned the grave, the, the Pokemon Tower, where people bury their Pokemon into a radio station tower. Oh, yeah, you solved the power plant's problem. Thanks to you, I never lost my job. To tell you, you're a real lifesaver. Please take this. And now it gives you the expansion card. You will need this in order to basically continue the remaining part of Kanto, which I will demonstrate at the very, very end. There's not really much to do in here. Um, but it does give you ah, the gorgeous melodies that go over the air. Don't be square. Grab your music off the air. Uh, so for reference in this expansion card, I don't know if I even, I think I did show this off as well. You can tune into different stations, but there's uh, now more stations. You've got the Pokey Flute Channel. You've got uh, this person who uh, sings this one song on. Uh... Oh yeah, actually yeah. So if you've got the radio on the station, you can exit out and the music keeps playing. Uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, the encounter rate decreases in Wild Pokemon, which is amazing. Uh, on the other days, it increases it. So. Uh, I get to be lucky and I get to actually have a, effectively a repel. I don't know. Uh, this person just discusses, uh, trainers out there. And then the other stations are all... I guess we can't access them because they're not in... Uh, well, not in the region. Not like to the ground floor. Ah, uh, we, we've got security. Oh, fair enough. So I think that's it. I think that's all you gotta do. Yeah, really. Just get that, get that card and keep going. Uh, there's... I might as well nail off this route while I'm at it as well. It's a Pruskio Berry. Handful of trainers here. Actually, even better. Let's get Herc out in front. He needs a bit of love. So, okay, so what else irks me? Um, so yeah, so the notification area on the side. First of all, uh, if, and if you're a Windows 10 user, please, please follow me on this one. Hover over the, uh, your volume, like, just on the top, of, hover over, like, the volume icon if you've got it. Notice how there's a, um, uh, there's a kind of highlight on just the, sp the volume icon. Now do the same thing for the network. You even get a tooltip telling you, like, some little bit of information about the, the thing that you just highlighted. On Windows 11, I do not know why both are the same, like, have the same highlighted area. They both will highlight on me, but they have different tooltips. I think the reason why they're both highlighted is because, uh, they're both, 
um, if you left click, you get the same menu for both. There is a combined volume slider and network area. But if you right click, you get different menu options. It, I don't understand it. I, I don't understand why that's the case. Why, why is it visually one way, but functionally another way? If you want the same menu, just like, don't, don't make them the same menu. Don't make them different buttons sometimes. Make them the same button. But no, you, like, of course you can't make it the same button because you need to be able to visually see volume and network as separate things. There is no reason why when you've left clicked it, they've condensed them both down into the same thing. There's no reason. I don't understand that. Uh, so let me keep going. Uh, there's a clock in the, in the, on the taskbar as normal, but it cannot show the seconds anymore. I always have mine showing the seconds, and I actually really liked one feature, I think in Windows 10, where uh, you were able to set, uh, yeah, yeah, just set that. And so all monitors, now I have the time in seconds on it. It doesn't really use my CPU anymore, it's just, yeah, it's cool, I like it. It's not there on Windows 11. I looked up people on, on Reddit, and they supposedly claim, you know, you can't, you can't tweak it. The, the registry added that you had to do to do it, doesn't work anymore. Nothing reads it. So, out of luck there. Uh, thing that irks me more. I use two monitors. The second monitor does not have a clock on it at all. It, it's not there. There's no option to show the clock on the other monitor. So when I have a game that's full screen, and I have the taskbar completely visible on my other monitor, I cannot see the time. I don't know why. It's very bizarre. Uh, you want to know, oh, bonus points on not having the seconds? Like, I'm looking over, I currently have, like, maybe, like, half a character wider on the, uh, on the time with the seconds than I do on the date down below. Um, and that's why I was like, oh, like, it's really nice. And currently it's 10.21.05, like, it's pretty wide already, so... Dude, Herc doesn't even need to, like... I don't have to worry about that paralysis. I am gonna heal though, because I don't think anyone else inflicts paralysis on this route. Uh, but yeah, no, that that irks me about that. Uh, and then let's let's keep going. I'm also the kind of guy who keeps the uh, the very traditional Windows Vista and earlier style of the taskbar contains full window labels. So currently, I actually I have five tab five windows of Chrome open. I know, um, but. All five windows are currently visible on the bottom of my screen. I don't have all my Chrome windows stacked under one tile that I have to hover over and then figure out which one I was clicking on because I can visually see the names of them without having to do any action right now on my computer. Now, when that bar gets full, it condenses, like it should. But for now, it's not. On Windows 11, I do not get that choice. I am forced into the icon style immediately, and there's no option to get around that. And as I said, or actually no, I haven't said, uh, three quarters of my taskbar go entirely unused. This is window space, this is space on my screen that has absolutely no function now. Or rather, it used to have the function of maybe here's a little bit of blank space you could right click to open up the task manager, but now I can't. I'm very peeved about that, so. Uh, that's most of my claims with the, the taskbar. But it's like, yeah, that that's it. Now let's go outside the taskbar. What else is different? Uh, first of all, also, uh, one thing I think is a little weird, just as an aesthetic one. Uh, when you hit Control alt delete uh, your, um, your accent color on your computer is the color of the background um, that you've got on Windows 10. Um, on Windows 11, it's just black. And uh, I, I'm, I'm going to admit, I'm a bit of a baby when it comes to using my computer. So whenever, like, my computer monitors, like, like, just dramatically change a color on me. Like, they'll just, like, go black, or they'll, or in the case of a blue screen, like, something, like, pops, and it's, like, you know, there's, like, a quarter of my vision, it suddenly goes all blue. I legit jump a bit. I don't know why. Maybe it was because as a kid, like, my computer would blue screen, and I would, like, kind of get, like, very upset because it's like, oh, that means I've lost stuff. Nowadays, it doesn't really mean too much. I'm not too fussed. Um, but it does, like, I do kind of jump still. I don't know. Um... I love how, like, we've got all these guys, all these, like, poison-type Pokemon, and this is one biker who's got a Flareon. It's a very bizarre one, but sure. Uh, 
So, yeah, having a black background actually does, like, kind of get me because I'm expecting the blue background. I'm expecting, like, a color that I've been seeing on my screen the whole time. And suddenly now, here it is. It's not the same color. It's definitely throwing me off. Uh, it's the same color as well while you're starting up as, uh, as well. It's just, it's just black for some reason. Why? Who asked for this? I swear, UI designers will just change things because they get paid to do stuff. And like, sure, but like, why? If anything, I, let me, let me circle back to the original topic. Uh, can I rip on Forza Horizon 5 for one thing? It is so much like the original games, or like 3 and 4, that you can only tell it's different because uh, a certain, uh, like, the, the score counter on the UI uh, is yellow in this game. It was blue in Forza Horizon 4 and red in Horizon 3. And it's yellow this time. Everything else is mostly the same, and in fact a lot of the game feels very much the same as the other Horizons. But that's also a degree of, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I actually do kind of really agree with that. Spend your time trying to implement stuff that may suck, rather than change the things that do actually work really nice. Windows 11 should have been that. If your UI designers have nothing better to do than to redesign the taskbar and remove, like, existing functionality out of it, then they're not doing their time right. I would actually prefer them to do nothing. Or at the very least, please provide the option to switch back. Uh, there's almost the ability to switch back in the form of a program which I was told to use called Win or Get. You can install it with Win Get. Sorry, not Win or Get. Uh, Win. Sorry, Start All Back. Win Get is the is the program that you can use to install it. Um, this is still closed. Will I be able to ever go into it? I don't know if you even can, because it's not like Saffron's ever closed. Because here I am, I'm finally in Saffron. I'll get that, don't worry. Good evening, you're out late, jeez. Uh, don't worry, I've got a, I've got a, a clear point that I'll, I'll end the stream, and it involves catching a very specific Pokemon, which we'll, we'll see in a bit. But not, not just right now, because I do want to explore the rock tunnel. So, I need to explore the rock tunnel, and then we can go over to where that is. So, yeah, this route just kind of exists, um, like, it's just there, uh, and then, I feel like I'm gonna be up against so many hikers, so I'm actually gonna go out with Chicky on this one. I think this guy's been waiting here for, like, three years. You like Pokemon, don't you? Me too. C cool. Ah oh, no! This is the worst thing for him to have, to have gone up against her. Uh, let me say some goods of Windows 11. First of all, uh, it ought. To, actually, no. Sorry, I'll take I'll take one thing back. Uh, my processor did not have. It was a 9700K. My motherboard did not have any of that security stuff set up. Uh, the trusted uh, processor module. None of that was set up. Uh, until I manually did it by finding someone who did an exact BIOS guide on which settings to change, uh, how many times I had to reboot my computer in order to, to like, enable settings. Like, I had to uh, disable, um, legacy, like, CSM, reboot, go back into the menu, reset my keys, reboot, then enable the module, reboot, check that it's available in Windows, and then I can install Windows 11. Like, it's not an easy process, and it's one where, like, I'm scratching my head wondering, like, why we have to do that in order to install an OS. If I'm an OEM build, I can understand, maybe, but, like, here I am, like, I'm running something that almost is exactly the same as Windows 10. Down to the point that NVIDIA control panel and hardware info still think it's Windows 10, because they didn't change the kernel much. I, I think it's still, like, major version 10, I don't know, something like that, so... I hope you appreciate those two guys. I am now. Oh, wait.
I should really plan for this. I should have like gone. Hey, doesn't someone need flash? Let's double check. Who do I have that's like the flash kind of Pokemon? Yeah. I think Oddish can learn flash. Ah. Uh. Let me, let me let me get that compatibility chart just for not. I think I, I I'm only gonna look up like who knows Flash. Uh, give me a national text number. I don't know what. Yeah yeah, I'll just combine it. Okay, artist, you get another use. You did it. Goodbye, Captain Rock. I knew thee well. <laughs> Uh, there we go, beta. See no flash already? Like, have I? <laughs> is this the one who I've already taught it to? No, he hasn't. All right, well, let's teach him it right now. There you go. Now he knows flash. <laughs> Happy days. Happy days. Yeah. Uh. So, alright, things I like about Windows 11, let's just, let's just say that. Uh, one, I like how when you resize a window, uh, it kind of shows you the bound, or like, or immediately try and draw the bounding area before the window is actually ready to redraw and stuff. Uh, it just kind of feels a bit more fluid than it does normally. Sure, cool. Uh, the rounded corners, I'm really on the fence of. I wish I could change it back. I know there's a registry tweak, but... I'm not- I'm not doing registered tweets. Not at this point. TM46- Oh my gosh, which one is that one? Steel Wing? Have I been waiting for that for so long? Alright, so. Anyway, this is the Rock Tunnel. It's full of level 12 Pokemon. Oh, does the radio work? Because that would actually be pretty cool. Uh, oh, good thing I changed the radio on the wrong side. Yes! So if I turn this on, I'm actually going to encounter fewer wild Pokemon, which is exactly what I would want. For one floor. That's going to kind of get a bit annoying, isn't it? So many items in there, jeez! Actually, I don't think there's any trainers in there. I think it's just items. Yeah. There used to be a bunch of trainers in there. At least, I, and sorry, in, in the first gen game. I don't know. It's all, all items. Maybe I should have just used a repel. Maybe that's a bit easier. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, the encounters you can find in this cave, uh, when you're on the ground floor, it's Cubone, Geodude, Machop, Zubat, and Machoke. And when it's, uh, when you're underground, it's Geodude, Cubone, Onyx, Zubat, Marowak, and Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is a bit of an interesting one. Do I even, I don't think I've even put any repels in my inventory. Well, you're gonna have to wing it for a bit. Sorry, guys. Ah. Oh. <laughs> All to not buy repels. This is exactly how the game was designed. Yeah. Uh, what other thing do I like? I like how I can set Windows Terminal as my default terminal. That's just... That's actually a nice touch. Uh, just great to finally get out of Windows. Legit, the, the command prompt, like, window, is so antiquated. They've done, like, some kind of minor patches, like being able to control C copy off it. Um, you know, over the course of time, and especially, I think, leading up to Windows 10. But it's finally good to, like, actually have, like, a legit, like, way to swap it out. Like, yeah. Um. <laughs> the Geo dude is so angry. Love him. Uh. What else, what else, what else? 
Honestly, it, it installed fine. And I actually didn't have any problems running games with Windows 11. I know that there's like some, there's a handful of games out there. Um, but at least my like brief experience of just like the things that I was playing at the time, which may or may not have been mostly Forza. Um, by the way, that's it. That's the rock tunnel. Done. There you go. Now you've seen the rock tunnel. Uh, I will now proceed to switch this. Uh, switch this Pokemon with one that flies. Goodbye, Beta. You were good for one moment. Maybe two moments. I'll come back to it later. Uh, let's get that flash fly out. Uh, well, yeah, no, it, it did install quick. It actually only took me about an hour. Um, and most of that was spent in the Windows 10, just like I'm using the install wizard. Uh, so I'm still able to use my computer. It's just at some point. Like, yeah, needs to turn off for like 15 minutes and then comes back on. It's all good. So, uh, let's head down this away. So, back down this way and. Still some more trainers. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, I just realized I'm going up against a psychic. Well, let's just hope I'm faster than him. Oh, wait, no, that's tricky. Oh no, I just realized I'm up against him with Chicky. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's getting me with that. Good thing I got those leftovers. He's dead, Jim. He's so dead. Yeah, uh... I think one thing that kind of confused me, I guess, is that I had used Winget, like, a while back. So, Winget is the, and I actually kind of want to see what they call it, just formally. Winget, the Windows Package Manager. This is an actual official Windows command line utility, and they have their own installate, or they, their own list of packages. And interestingly, like, Winget is, like, it's weird, because, like, it's not really as much Package Manager as, uh, as it used to be, but, uh... Yeah, no, like, well, sorry, I, I guess, like, it's as much a package manager as package managers really need to be. You just say you want to install a program, and then it kind of tracks what version of that program you have, and then when people put their programs on the the platform, all they have to do is just kind of indicate this installer is for this version, and this installs for this version, and then that's it. And as long as your installations kind of go okay, and your uninstallers work fine, it's basically just exposing install, upgrade, uninstall, and... Other than that, searching, validating, like, just that kind of stuff. Real simple, surprisingly, it fits in with Windows well, and double bonus points, all of your regularly installed programs show up in the list of installed programs. And so I started using my Windows 11 experience by going into Winget and uninstalling uh, programs that are marked as, like, being there, but they're not actually, um, like, they weren't actually downloaded, like, they're just, um... That's a bit of just advertising. Uh, some people are going to say bloatware, but I mean, is it bloatware if they're not installed? Arguably. I'll, I'll, I'll give... <laughs> oh, I shorts in the grass. I'll give like a half point on that one. Um, so there's that. Uh, I did also use the, uh, the subsystem for Linux, and I did um, try and play Extreme Tux Racer, and it worked. And I was like, cool, like that's actually really neat that uh, the, the Linux features natively just extend out into the graphical side of Windows without, like, any kind of, you know, need an X11 server running anymore. Like, it just runs. Um, I think that's gonna lead to some very interesting design choices later on, if people will write programs that just install to the Linux half of Windows, and then just run and look pretty okay. That it's still kind of obviously, like, Linux, you know, window drawing in some ways, but... You know, it's kind of surprising how smooth and how little you have to set that up in order to make it work. So, that's a plus. Uh, but other than that, there's not really much of a reason to use Windows 11. And I think that's probably a great thing. But also, like, the taskbar stuff, like, all of that got in the way. I suddenly had less functionality and I realized how much I do depend on my taskbar being able to do the features that I do use on it. Um... 
so it's it just kind of throws me off and it, I'm not as aware of as many new features in Windows 11 as um, as maybe they could like uh, the only other one I can think of that I didn't mention is running Android apps natively which I'm pretty sure isn't even there yet they just kind of missed out on it so who knows uh, at the very least, uh, it's not like they're going to be push or pressuring Windows 11 onto people until at least another three years' time. Um, so if you get the prompts, which my laptop actually did get the prompts straight away without any setup, so I guess it's that as well. Uh, then I don't know. I, I, I'm not. I'm, you still get a window of time to roll back, uh, so that's fine. Um, and honestly, like I switched to it, and then I started using it for a bit. Um, tried to, you know, do a drive usage, and then just couldn't. I, I couldn't. I couldn't stick with it, so I went back, and then that's that's it. My computer's still fine. Uh, maybe I'll do a reinstall when I do Windows 11 later. Look at that. Uh, what Pokemon are on this route for reference? Drowsy, Rattata, Magnemite, Hypno. Finding Hypnos out in the wild—that's a—that's a real interesting one. Yeah. Well, I think that's the last trainer that's going to be in my way. I know, right? Psychic Fidel. Cool. Alright. So, uh, I saw this, like, basically at the beginning of the last stream. Look at this guy! He's just here! I love how he's not even loaded in until you've, like, stopped here. So, this guy is blocking the way to the Diglett Cave. This Diglett Cave goes all the way to Pewter City. And we can't go through Mount Moon at the top, uh, at the top, and we can't go around to, um, to, uh, Cinnabar Island because the road's closed. So this is actually, surprisingly, something that you encounter right away, and that's actually the one thing that limits you from continuing on. You can catch the Snorlax, but remember, we went through the cycling road, so there's only one Snorlax in this game. What you gotta do is get that expansion card in Lavender Town, which requires you getting the power plant back up, Turn on the Pokey Flute, and then talk to the Snorlax. And the Snorlax wakes up. That's a real cool thing, and I, I actually kind of like this, like, reusage of the Pokey Flute. Anyway, here he is, Snorlax! Snorlax is an amazing Pokemon, he knows Rest, Snore, Body Slam, and Roller. He's gonna absolutely throw me off because he's gonna be using Rest. <laughs> uh, or it could be using Rollout, which is equally as annoying. Uh, Snorlax is incredibly bulky, and I don't know why I'm hitting him with a special attack. Actually, no, sorry, he's a physical. He's a physical wall. So what am I doing? I should be using, um... Uh... No, I'm boy. Fluffer. Sorry, Fluffer. Or is he... Oh, he is a special defender. Oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, no, he is a special defender. And he's also incredibly bulky as. And also, he's got leftovers. I, I guess I could give him the Thunder Wave, that's not really gonna do too much. Maybe maybe he'll miss an attack, but like, geez, that Body Slam is gonna like, absolutely annihilate. What is with this one HP kind of business that keeps happening? Oh, uh, uh, great turn. <laughs> Let's just get him with an attack. Alright, he's committing, he's committing. Oh no, it was a crit! I can't believe it! Can't believe it! Okay, let's get in with the no on boy. Um, he's not gonna absolutely roll the entire party, but it's definitely one where- I mean, that's why I saved. Uh... Yeah, Snorlax is a... <laughs> I'm fairly certain Snorlax is a, is a special, uh, defender, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I was kidding. Yeah, no, he's-, he's... Yeah, he's a special defender, so I should be hitting him with Earthquake. And hopefully not kill him. Because this is going to do a fair bit of damage, but... He's got a lot of HP, he can he can take anything. And I guess so does no one, boy. Also, I guess he's stuck in Rollout for a bit, so... That buys me a couple of turns to use uh, a ball on him. Well, is that that little health and paralyzed and now he's missed so I get one turn to do it well I've got great balls
Ah, oh, because if he rests... Oh, he's committing! He's committing to the biscuit! Amazing. So... I feel like I've missed, like, you know, these set Pokemon encounters. When was the last one? Must have been the pseudo Wudo. Because I don't think there's any other point in the game that you're actually required to do a, an encounter like this. I did come across the Suicune ones, I guess it was that, but... Like, uh, yeah, all, all the legendaries are, like, off to the side. Um, I guess still like first gen. First gen didn't even shove the legendaries in your face. There it is. There it is. Oh, I guess that buys me two turns of use. Oh! Oh, why does it take forever for the south to come back? Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going back in with the earthquake. And back down it goes. There he goes. Oh, I love Snorlax. He's so great. It's almost as, as if I use a certain relative of Snorlax as a avatar for 13 years on the internet. Jeez. Don't ask what on earth I was using on the internet before. I've got no clue. Because I guess like all these Munchlax things were from like 2004. Because cause yeah, Munchlax was... Wow, okay. Because yeah, Munchlax was announced as a as a Gen 4 Pokemon very soon. He like first appeared in like Pokemon Dash. Maybe he was in the anime, I think, for a bit. Um, just very briefly. Um, and then yeah, remember that like Diamond and Pearl, the games were released in 2007. So he uh yeah, no, Munchlax definitely beat the game on that one. Uh 2004 was before Emerald as well. I thought that was actually like uh, surprising how early that was. Bonsai was pretty early as well, but not as early. Don't ask what exactly I liked with Munchlax as well. I really just liked eating, and I like eating. And I'm a massively large individual. Uh, <laughs> so, Snorlax is definitely a tough catch. He's, what does he got, a catch rate of 3? 25, it's, like, it's not too rough, but... Ah, I can't believe I'm, like, not getting that opportunity when he, uh, when he's still, like, you know, rested up. Because when he's asleep, that should be a double chance of getting him, but... I guess a chance is a chance. It either works or it doesn't. And he's going back to rest. Sure. You know what, I actually do appreciate you only have to fight one of these. Because, yeah, it's a bit weird that there's two of them in the first game. Like, you can catch both, I guess, but... Yeah, what do you need both for? And yeah, level 50 as well, like... That's actually, like, rather remarkable, because, like... Legit, he's... The only Pokémon that I've encountered... Well, yeah. No. Yeah, actually, yeah. There's only... Only Lance has had Pokémon up to level 50. And me, with Arcanine. And that's it. I've, nothing's been stronger than that. So you catch this thing, and I guess it doesn't have effort values, but... Like, I don't know, it's a pretty strong Pokemon. It's right there, and it's Snorlax. It's got a decent move list, like, right off the bat as well. Rest and Snore is, like, that's actually rather decent. I love it, by the way, he's not using Snore. He keeps just, like, trying to use Body Slam, I guess. Not very lucky with the, the balls on this one, am I? Nah. It, it's always through rumbles as well. Oh, but now he's tried using Snore. <laughs> Interesting go, but sure. Out he goes. Come on, Snorlax. Ah, oh, come on! Ah! Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're just gonna hear these dings forever. Get used to it. I'm almost out of earthquakes, bro. That's how long you take him. So, yeah. Uh, so I wonder how much of the game is left. Because uh, I, I know there's three more badges. Um, oh, he actually managed to use Snort once. Oh, there you go. I got Snort out. Uh, we're going in with Herc. 
I could actually probably just go kill him with his strength. Well, maybe not. He's got the higher attack, but less stab on strength. It's kind of a bit fine there. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to think how much of this game is left. We can go through Diglett Cave, and there's a city on the other side with another, um, another gym. Uh, there exists the area down to Mount Moon without, I guess there's that, and then you go down to Pallet Town, and then you go to Cinnabar, and you're kind of good. And you've got your, your, uh, effectively your post game. Sorry, your post post game, because this is a double post game. But it's like, uh, you got your training for your super boss, so I'll probably do some legendary hunting in two streams time, and in one stream's time. Getting all those rest of the badges. There we go. There's a Snorlax. Took his time, but got him in the end. <laughs> what sounds like it's, its cry may actually be its snores, or the rumblings of its hungry belly. What an amazing fella. Thousand pounds, just like me. So you catch him. Ah, uh, this call is... Oh, speaking of, Todd Skyrim came out. I'm not talking about it. So anyways, uh, that's the Diglett Cave up there, and this guy... You started to collect Kanto gym badges? Don't you agree that the trainers here are tough? Not, not that much. There was one of them that had like a team of late 30s. That's like on par with the 8th gym leader. That's amazing that like... And, and not even in the beginning... I can't even. I can't even. So... Yeah, so... Uh, I predict that there'll be one more stream of getting all these badges, and then... I'll try and see how much I get out of one more stream of trying to catch legendaries and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, we're gradually approaching the end of the game. And this, this tunnel is the key to continuing on. What lies on the other side? Maybe I did just mention it. But I've caught me a Snorlax, and that's all that matters. I, I'm not going to use the Snorlax on my team, but that's okay. <laughs> Anyways, I would like to thank you all for watching this stream. I hope you've all had a great time watching it. Uh, if you've enjoyed, uh, please leave a, uh, or if you're on Twitch, then just leave a follow. If you're on YouTube, subscribe and downvote this video because I want to see how many people actually paid attention and downvoted the video. That'd be good fun. Um, yeah, other, other than that, uh, I don't really have anything else to say about swinging YouTube algorithms. Enjoy the content. Watch other things if you haven't watched them already. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Is there anything that big exciting come up in the next week? Who knows, but, hey, every, every week's an exciting week somehow. I managed to, like, flood this entire week by talking about absolutely nothing. Amazing. That's great. I love it. Uh, but, ah, uh, it's been good. Playing, playing Pokemon's been good still. I'm enjoying it. And it's almost done as well, which is really sad, but, you know, I hope you all have been enjoying it. And, uh, have a merry... November 15 to all. Have a good one. Stay safe. Eat your greens. Don't stay up too late. 